Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a video on uh, software-defined radio. Uh, today we're going to look at our Adlum Pluto SDR. Uh, we're going to connect that using something called GQRX. So let me just simplify it up my GQRX. GQRX is also a software that allows me to actually visualize my signals. Uh, once you have your uh, Adlum Pluto SDR connected to your laptop, all you need to do go to device and just click on unknown and do a device scan it will automatically pick up the driver of your uh, Pluto SDR so once your driver is all good just click OK and just press start button uh, as we know something about Pluto SDR it's by analog devices and it allows me to transmit and receive simultaneously as compared to hack RF which you can either transmit or receive uh, in this video what we're gonna do we're gonna try to explore our Wi-Fi. Uh, we're going to try to explore our Wi-Fi signals and let's see how does this Wi-Fi signal look like. Look like. Uh, just to give you a basic idea, my Pluto SDR is connected. Um, everything is fired up. I'm just going to change this frequency to something else. I'm going to go to a GSM band which is somewhere around 935 megahertz and we're going to try to see what type of signals I can see. So as you can clearly see there's a lot of activity going on. Uh, this GQRX, uh, once you download your, uh, uh, once you download Gun Radio Companion, it automatically comes pre-installed. So all you need to do is just go to your terminal and simply type GQRX, and you're good to go. So right now, let's look at, let's try to explore our Wi-Fi. As I can click on my Wi-Fi, holding an option key on my laptop, and when I press on this I would see in which Wi-Fi I'm connected to so right now as you can see I'm connected to this uh, D block I Wi-Fi I'm getting an IP address of 192 as you can see uh, 192 this 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 DSS ID this is my SSID this is the MAC address of my device I have a channel it's a 20 megahertz of channel I have RSSI noise 89 91 dB transmission rate physical mode MCS and NSS. Let's try to explore what these are using uh, our software defined radio. So as you can clearly see something from this, this some of the wider information is there. So we're going to look at channel 11 at 2.4 gigahertz band. In order for me to actually look at this, I have this chart right here which you can clearly see. So at 2.4 gigahertz we have about uh, 14 different bands, right? And each band is about 22 megahertz apart. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, so each band is about 22 megahertz apart. Normally, when you do the setting of your routers, it will automatically select either channel 1, 16, or 11. And these are the bands which are not overlapping as compared to the other band that you can see. They are not very much overlapped. Uh, so normally, the band that is being allocated by pressing an option key and clicking on this, I'm getting channel 11. Channel 11, which is in black, it has 2.462 megahertz of frequency. 2.462 gigahertz of frequency. Uh, so let's just quickly look at our spectrum on our GQRX. Let's go to 2, 4, and just quickly look at it again. Uh, 11 channels, so this 11 corresponds 2.462. 2.462 all right so this is a lot of activity going on because of this I can see there's a lot of activity in terms of my spectrum and I can also visualize this using my GQRX so there's a lot of activity you can see the signal moving up and down uh, why because when I click on option key and hit on this this is also operating at uh, same frequency band. The other Wi-Fi with a different password is also operating at this frequency. Internet, the other VSS ID is actually internet that is also operating at 11 megahertz. Because the frequency and the password is going to be different that's why they're not overlapping much. Uh, so that's how you explore it. I also I am also connected to the hotspot that I'm using through my phone. Uh, that is this. So when I look at some of the parameters from this, 
at, at using my phone, I'm connected at channel number six. When I look at my channel number six, channel number six is 2.437. 2.4. Four, three, seven. This is the signal that that I am receiving from my phone. So my phone is acting as a router for my laptop, and this is the this is the channel activity that I'm seeing using this. There are some of the key parameters that you need to know. So if I were to go ahead and option this, BSSID. This is an SSID of my phone. I have my channel, which is channel is six. 20 megahertz of course there's going to be a country code and rssi rssi which is actually receive signal strength indicator what type of a signal strength that i'm seeing the smaller this number is going to be the 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 so this number will basically tells me about what is the strength of my signal i'm not going to say anything else and then i have a noise floor that is somewhere around negative 98 db so now in order for me to find out what is the actual SNR of my signal, I'm going to take my RSSI and I'm going to subtract negative 87 from it. I'm going to subtract negative 87 from it. So in order for me to find out what is my SSI uh, signal to noise ratio, what I'm going to do is going to be RSSI minus noise. So my RSSI is negative 23 dB and I'm going to, okay, now it's negative 20 dB. Now it's 90 dB. I'm going to put my phone here. So negative 19 dB minus, or okay, now I'm going to do minus 23 minus minus 90 dB would give me 67. So I'll get a I'll get a signal to noise ratio of 67, 67 dB. That is actually my signal to noise ratio. The higher this number is of signal to noise ratio, which we just calculated the better my signal is. So I'm getting a very good signal strength. So this is the transmission rate. I can transmit data rate up to 73 megabits per second. And also uh, I'm using, so there are different standards of Wi-Fi. So right now I'm connected using a Wi-Fi standard 802.11n. Uh, then we have something else like 802.11ac, which operates at five gigahertz band. If I'm getting a connection of 802.11ac, then I will, instead of having 2.4 gigahertz of band, I'll have uh, a band of uh, 5 gigahertz band, which I will see. Then I also have something called modulation coding index, that is 7. So let's just quickly look at what is that. So modulation coding index is actually associated with this table that you normally see. So uh, for HT, HT means high throughput or high high throughput and this is for 802.11n and for very high throughput mcs means that is for 802.11ac so these are the numbers so if i were to look at the property of my wi-fi signal by pressing an option holding an option key and pressing on this i'm getting a modulation index of seven Having a modulation index of 7, which means in 802.11, it's mean the modulation and coding scheme that my, my, my Wi-Fi signal is using is actually 64 QAM. And I made a video on it using GNU Radio Companion, which means I'll have 64 constellation points. And in order for me to represent those 64 bits, I need to have what? So let's take uh, 64 which will give me at least six bits so every every transition on my signal i'll be using six bits because two raised to six is going to be 64 bits so it's using qam which is quadrature amplitude modulation and the coding scheme is five divided by six five over six which means for every five bits i'll encode six bits where five bits are going to be your data bits and and one bit is going to be that redundant bit so 5 over 6, if I were to look at the efficiency of this coding scheme, so 5 divided by 6, that would give me 83%. So the higher this coding number is going to be, the better the modulation scheme is going to be. So basically sort of help me in forward error correction, where if I, want, if I have some bits corrupted, it will help me uh, 
to do perform error correction and detection so higher this number is going to be the better it is 5 by 6 means every time I'm having a 5 bits of data I'll encode that using 6 bits where 1 bit is going to be that redundant bit that will help me use uh, to, to perform forward error correction and there are some other things that you don't need to worry about so I'm using a two, 20 megahertz of band so this is associated with 802.11 because I can clearly see by pressing an option key and hitting this I'm using a 20 megahertz of band for 802.11 sometimes you will have 40 dB, 40 megahertz of band, 80 megahertz of band and 86, 160 megahertz of band the other thing that you need to notice when you're looking at your signal is actually NSS what does NSS means? NSS means uh, number of spatial streams so uh, uh, basically sort of like this if your router is capable of transmitting MIMO multiple in multiple MIMO so normally 802.11 AC has multiple streams which means you can think of it like number of antennas the more the antennas are going to be that that guarantees I'll get higher data rates as compared to a, a system that has lower number of spatial streams so let, let me just click on this router also I'm getting a number of spatial stream to be one or no, it's two so which mean I'll have two transmitting antennas and two receiving antennas same thing so the router might have at least two different antennas which are there which is going to transmit and receive your signal so higher this number of spatial stream is that guarantees higher data rates it's, it's like having multiple tongues and you can speak at the same time uh, so that's the idea regarding uh, these number of spatial streams so I hope you like uh, this small tutorial on exploring Wi-Fi signal uh, using software defined radio like Adlon Pluto SDR and this is how the spectrum would look like uh, so right now this is capturing all type of signals which are being present but my my router or my laptop was only seeing the connection which is connected to so I can stop the transmission here and let's see anything any effect I can see because right now it's connected it's tuned into the frequency of my uh, my phone so I'm gonna stop my hotspot and see do I see any other activity or the spectrum has gone down or there are some other routers which are operating in that frequency range too uh, so that's the idea I can simply go here and I can look at other routers as well so let's go to 2.462 11 2.462 uh, 4 Four, six, two. I can definitely see there's a lot of activity because the signal is continuously jumping because there are at least two routers that are operating at uh, channel 11 at 2.4 gigahertz of band. So I hope you like this small tutorial. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. And thanks for watching.